Hi there guys, um, another video from Ian, uh, Ian at Cumulus Bushcraft, um, just wanted to go through some basic fire lighting um, and some of the tools I use to, to get a fire going out here, um, depending on the weather obviously, it's paramount that you get a fire going in this environment that we're in, so it's quite cold, can be quite wet. Um, so with a few basic tools, you know, if you're sort of new to bushcraft, uh, there's, there's a few things here that I want to introduce you to. Uh, some very, very basic tools. Um, not expensive as well. Um, got a mora knife. Uh, if you're looking into the world of bushcraft, you've probably come across these before. Um, they're a Scandinavian grind uh, blade. Very light, very versatile. I said very cheap. Um, factory manufactured, they're not handmade, which is why they're so cheap. They uh, come with this plastic sheath. Um, and when I first got into bushcraft all those many moons ago, I bought one of these and I still use it to this day, uh, despite having some um, not fancier knives, but ones that cost a little bit more because of that handmade quality. Uh, despite having those, these will this will do pretty much everything that those will anyway. Um, so, and at a fraction of the price. So, if you can get your hands on one of these. Um, obviously look up the UK uh, knife law, make sure you're familiar with that and obviously make sure that you are running it past your parents as well, making sure that you know, you've know you got the ability to be able to use it. You know, the last thing you want is, is to be caught with one of these um, and not have any good reason to, to be using it. Uh, but if you're new to bushcraft and you're looking to practice bushcraft skills then this would be the one to go for, personally that's what I'd recommend. Um, also have a light my fire uh, ferrous cerium rod uh, or fire stick or spark maker whatever you want to call it um, what it does using the rod and the striker scratching it together produces sparks very hot sparks which when they drop into something dry and fibrous that's when we're going to be getting um, flame basically and that's what we're looking for um, so these two as a combination uh, are invaluable when you're out practicing bushcraft skills in the world here in the in the woods. Um, these are also waterproof and again very cheap. Um, retail about 15 quid something like that on Amazon, uh, and you can you know you, you can strike this till you're blue in the face, and you'll still be left with plenty of rod left, so to speak. Uh, so they are very good and they they hold their value because they're not just like a one strike and they're over sort of deal. Um, but the way these work together. Uh, as a combination for fire lighting uh, is or well, one of the examples at least anyway is um, with silver birch so silver birch bark is full of uh, tars and resins which is why you can see that sort of orangey color where it's been scratched up here before and on the back the stuff's you know if you find a, a fallen silver birch go harvesting is what i'd say it does naturally shed this sort of loose material and with, with the knife you can uh, sorry you can just sort of go up to the tree and peel it off providing you're only taking the stuff that is naturally shedding but if you are looking to take um, more take some of the bark then obviously make sure you're doing it from a fallen or downed uh, or dying um, silver birch okay they're, they're quite easy to to spot in the woods you know they've got a sort of silver white sort of bark on them if you're not familiar then um, Either Google it or or, uh, or look to a tree ID book. They're, they're pretty cheap. You can get them again. You can get them on Amazon um, relatively cheaply. The Collins ones I'd recommend. If, again, if you're looking to, to sort of just just start up. Um, but again, without further ado, as I said, the, the way we would use all of these three together is using the knife, um, laying the silver birch bark down flat. I hope you guys can see this okay you will scratch again I'm doing this in slow time so just so you guys can, can understand and can see scratch up the top like this and obviously at this stage you know before this stage you'd have all of your second stage kindling ready to go uh, you would have cleared an area for where your fire is going to go um, uh, put a raft down that sort of thing to keep the fire off the ground done everything you can just to make sure that all of this effort you're going to to get that initial flame is actually going to be worth it and you're not just going to end up having to do it all over again with fresh bark as well you will get 
a lot more shavings quicker. The reason why this is taking slightly longer than it probably would is because I've used this piece before to get the fire going earlier on today. So I've got to try and scratch it from other directions to bring in some more dust. And you'll see after a while, I am left with all this dust here. What I can do with that, making sure my knife's away, it's nicely stowed, using the ferrous Syrian rod. A couple of different techniques, either I can withdraw the rod in my left hand, uh, what it looks like the right to you, or on the right hand side, uh, and that will subsequently drop the sparks in, or I can push down with, with my right hand. Problem with that is you can sometimes have a tendency to to whack all the dust and that blows it off and you, know, you end up losing your fire whatever kind of works for you what I have a tendency to do is drop some shards in so just lightly scratch the rod to drop some of the metal predominantly um, iron and cerium these rods are made from hence ferrous cerium so I drop a load of sparks in and then when I do eventually drop a spark in it will all go up like a firework, hopefully. Well, that's the idea, at least, anyway. But now I'm happy, I'm good to go. Got a bit of a divot in my ferrocerium rod there, so. Right, let's go for it. windy today which isn't helping there we go took a little bit longer than it normally would do but always the way once that's going as you see it's quite windy I can use other strands of silver birch to help me get that going it's not the ideal conditions because I said it is quite windy but you'll see when it eventually does go with just the use of a knife and a ferrocerium rod when it does go burns very well it does close in on itself as you see it sort of folds which can be its undoing really sometimes it can snub itself out but I just wanted to show you guys a quick little video there some basic bushcraft tools how you can get a fire going with nothing but silver birch hope you enjoyed the video guys and um, I'll hopefully be in a position to be able to make some more basic bushcraft videos in the not too distant future um, I've been running a few courses recently um, so I've not really had much time to get out into the woods to to, to, to film them basically because I've been out here running sessions I'm running one tomorrow as well um, and I'll hopefully better put something up with that um, which will include some, uh, some more advanced bushcraft techniques as well so stay tuned. Thanks guys!